Hello, my name is Linda Chersnowski. I'm the Outreach Librarian. This is a presentation on searching CINAHL. To find CINAHL, you go to the Clarion website and click on Library in the right-hand corner. This will bring up the library homepage. You'll want to come down to Research Resources and click on Databases A to Z. These are our databases. They're in alphabetical order. You'll want to click on C. Then you'll want to come down and click on CINAHL with full text. If you are off campus, you will have to log in. The first screen you will see will be this brown screen. You will click Log In. It will pop up the second screen on the bottom here. You will put in your username at clarion.edu is already provided. You don't have to type that in. Then your password you have associated with your logon name and you'll click Log In. This will bring up the CINAHL uh, search page. This is the basic search. I like the advanced search, so I click on the advanced search. This brings me up the advanced search page. It gives me three boxes in order to write my information in. I also want to bring back everything right now that I can see full text. So I'm going to put a little click in the full text box. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put in 2008 to 2014. Now this is the bottom of the search page. There's many ways you can narrow your thing if you want to have all females. If you're looking for something that deals with this, the female or the male, you can limit it there. You can come over here to age groups. You have a lot of different ways that you can limit your search. Now going back to the search page, I wrote in administration of insulin. I put my years in down here, 2008 to 2014. I put a check mark in the full text box. This is my result. I have 798 results. What I like to do is then I like to check on, click on the title of an article. This brings up the abstract. I love the abstract because the abstract will give me major subjects and minor subjects. These are different terms that you can search for your information on administration of insulin for me. But if you had other search terms, this would give you different search terms of where to, of different things you could search. I like this article, so if I like this article, I'm going to click on PDF Full Text. This brings me up the full text of the article. Under At the bottom of the article, if you put your mouse over, you'll get this gray bar. From here, you can save it, and you can save it to your computer, to your flash drive, however you want to save it. You also can print it. There's a, an icon for printing from there. Along the right hand side there's also a print button up here. You can print it from here, but you can also email it to yourself or you can find the citation format. So let's take a look at that. For the email option, this is the pop-up screen you'll get. You want to put your email address in here. You want to put a subject in here so you know what you're getting from Ephost. And over here, you can uh, choose the correct citation format. This is APA, but you can choose your format here. And then you email this to yourself. Send it. Once you get this in your email and you open it up and you open up the article, across the top of the article is the correct citation format. Now, I always use a caveat here. I won't say they're perfect, but it gives you a good beginning. So you need to look at it to make sure your periods and your quotation marks and all that are in the right place. Also, when you click on the Cite button on the side, it'll bring up the citation format. Here you can choose APA, and here all you have to do is copy and paste this into a Word document. Now you'll look there, the formatting's not right because the second line in APA is always indented one tab space, so you'll have to do that. And you need to look it over to make sure the periods are there, the quotation marks, the parentheses, and things that are there that you need. Now, say I didn't get enough information when I did my first search for full text I'm going to research, do my research again for administration of insulin but I'm not going to put a check mark in the full text box but I still am going to limit it to the years I only want the last six years of information so this time it brought me back 2,531 articles so now again I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to click on the title of the article to bring up the site uh, the abstract of the article and look at all the major subject areas and the minor subject areas. If you're having inf problems finding keywords or terms to search, this is always a good place to find them in the abstract of an article. Now over here in the right hand column it says check link source for more information. Sometimes this might be held in another database. If you click on that it will show you what database and bring it up for you. But more than likely you're going to click on this that says request this item through Iliad. So I'm going to 
click on that. You're going to get the Iliad logon screen. You're going to, have to put your username in here. You don't have to put at clarion.edu. It is already in there. Then you're going to be, uh, put your password and you have a associated with that and you click on log on. Now the first time you do this you're going to have to put uh, your first name, your last name, anything that has this red asterisk in front of it. You're going to need your student ID number, your clearing email address, and your local address. This tells the interlibrary loan people where to send your information to. This is the bottom of the screen. The next important thing over here is you're going to have to choose your home campus location. If you're a distance ed student, you're going to choose distance ed. If you're on Clarion campus, you're going to choose Clarion. If you're on the Venango campus, you're going to choose Venango. This way, they will get the information to you where you're located. Now, once I go back, all this information from that article that I found is filled in for me. I do not have to fill anything in to me in for this. The uh, turnaround time, all I do is go to the bottom of the page and I will hit submit request. The turnaround time for this is about 24 to 48 hours. You will receive notice in your Eagle email account that your article is there. There will be a hot link for you to click on that will take you into Iliad. You'll log into Iliad and you will find this electronically received articles right here. It will bring up all the articles you've requested. You will click on this little view button and it will open it up for you. From there you can save it, you can print it, you can do anything you want for it with it. It will stay in this account for four weeks and then it is purged. There is no limit to the number of articles that you can request except if you can only request two articles out of one issue of a journal. We can't do any more than that out of one journal issue because of copyright problems. Now, if you're still having problems finding information, use the CINAHL headings. It's at the top of the page. If you click on that, it will bring up this little screen where I typed in insulin. Then I clicked browse. It brought up all these different ways that insulin is indexed in CINAHL. I found the one that says insulin injection, so I clicked on it it opened up this box. It looks, this is all the different ways it's looking at insulin injection. I put a check mark in ins injection administration and I wanted to explode that. I wanted to find all the ways that they're looking at this and I also wanted a major concept in the article. Then I'll go up here and I'll click on search the database. So it searches the database for me and it brought me back 976 articles on this. Again, click on the title so you can look at the abstract to see if it's an article you want. But look at this on the side here. It brought me articles back from 1981 through 2014. I don't need them back that far. So if I click on this 1981 and put the, in 2008, it will redo the search for me and bring me only back articles from 2008 to 2014. But on the bottom here, also look, it only brought back all results. I need academic journals. I need scholarly journals. So I'm going to put a check mark in that academic box. It will redo the search for me and it will bring me back all articles from 2008 to 2014, plus they're all scholarly journals. Now help finding keywords. This is a question I get a lot from online students. Use the CINAHL headings or in other databases it's called a thesaurus use that to see how they're looking at your uh, sub subject or talk topic or keyword. Use the keywords and search terms that are included in the abstract of the article. That's why it's so important to click on the title of the article and look at the abstract. Also, the articles at the end always have a good reference or a bibliography. Look at those. You can get those articles. Look at those articles. We can find those articles for you. And if you use literature analysis in one of your search boxes or a meta-analysis in one of the search boxes, literature review will bring you back all articles that have a literature review of your topic. So it will give you all the information or the history about your topic in a literature review. Meta-analysis deals with facts and figures. So if there's been a study done on your uh, topic or something like that, it will give you the facts and figures that they have found for it. 
Also, you want a scholarly peer-reviewed article. These are the ways to identify it. The authors are clearly identified, usually has their credentials and where they work. The title is usually very descriptive and lengthy. It's not short. The article is usually longer than five pages. It's quite a lengthy article. And there's always a reference list or a bibliography at the end of the articles. And a lot of times the articles will have specific se sections as a literature review, the methodology they use, the conclusion. They will have different sections in through it. So you need to look at your article. Does it have those different sections? Does it have a literature review? Does it have a reference list? Does it have graphs, images, tables? This all tells you whether it's a scholarly article. Beyond CINO, those other databases you could find information in. This is a list of the other databases that you'll find information lists. So if you're not finding anything in CINO, look in one of these other different, different databases. Health Source Nursing Academic is a very good source. And if you need to use a website, some of the websites deal very well with health information. Look at it. Look at the authority. Does it list the author's credentials and where it's found? Government, EDU, or organizations are really good uh, websites, not personal ones. Accuracy. Does it list the authors in the institution? Does it give you a way to contact them? Is it objective? Is it biased? Kind of look at the information involved there. Is it kept up to date? Is it regularly kept up to date? Do the links work that it gives you in the article? And the coverage. Can it be viewed very easily on your screen or do you have to pay a fee to see it? Do you have to have a particular browser or software? That all little hints that maybe this isn't where you want to be. If it's good and it fits all these uh, things you need to consider, then it's a good website. Another question I get is APA formatting. Here's four different places to go for APA formatting. They will help you. They will lead you through it. The one on the bottom, Citation Machine, if you have a article a DVD or something you want to use in your paper, this will show you how to cite it. All you have to do is type in the information you have and it will give you back the correct citation format. There is a LibGuide available on the library website for APA formatting. You might want to consult that. If you still need help, here are all the numbers. This is the number for the Carlson Libraries. Here are the numbers for the SOAR Libraries. Ask a Librarian. This is our email. If you click on this, it will give you our FAQ page plus a box for you to write in your question. We try to answer this within 24 hours. If you want to chat with us, click on Chat Live with a Reference Librarian. Somebody is here from 9 in the morning to 9 at night for you to chat with. Also, all online students have a toll-free number. This is your toll-free number. Click on that and when you get through on that, press 5 for the library. It takes you right into the library ref desk. This is my information. That's my telephone number, my office hours, my email. I check my email every day. This is the best way to get in contact with me. Always though put in the subject put something in your subject line that I know you're an online student and you have a question about nursing or about the CINAHL databases so I know I need to answer this right away. I try to get back to you as soon as possible. Again, there's that 800 number. Press 5 for the library. I want to thank you for your time and attention. I'm here to help you in any way you can. I love searching for information so don't be afraid to ask me to help you find information. I like to search for information. Thank you again for your time and attention and I hope you find everything you need to write your paper or find the information your professor is asking for.